I've been saying that the reason Brian Koberger is still in jail is because he doesn't have an alibi. I want to extend that to say that he's still in there because he made a mistake. If the phone pings are at least 50% accurate, VK is a part of the crime and I want to show you his mistake. It bothered me that Brian's phone activity is missing during the time the homicides occurred. But I thought that wasn't enough to say he's guilty because I figured his battery could have been dead or maybe he turned it off to be able to sleep. But Brian himself is saying he was out driving around. It also bothered me that the defense never said where he drove since the PCA claims he drove around Southern Idaho. So just for clarity, I wanted to know where he went on his long drive to be able to prove or disprove the phone pings that started at Blaine. First, let's look at the long drive. If any of the phone pings for Blaine, Genesee, and Uniontown are correct, then that means Brian was driving in Idaho. In addition, the capture of Brian traveling at 1300 Johnson Road wasn't a phone ping. They said it was actually him on camera, okay? So looking at the map, we can deduce that his long drive couldn't have been through northern or western Washington for him to be coming up Johnson Road. So now let's look at his phone and where he made his mistake. Everybody was saying how going for a long drive is natural and he could have left his phone at home. But going for a long drive is no reason to turn off your phone. In fact, it's a good reason to have your phone with you in case you need an assistance. So if he didn't want to hear it ring, he could have put it on mute. Here's his mistake. Koberger's mistake was he didn't turn his phone off before he left his apartment. It was a mistake to travel down that road a little bit before he turned it off. By doing that, we know for a fact that number one, he left his apartment. We know for a fact he had his phone with him for his drive. And we know the battery wasn't dead. He made a conscious decision to turn it off. How do we know that? Because if the phone went dead, he wouldn't have been able to turn it back on near Blaine unless he had his charger. So he made a conscious decision to turn his phone off. But his mistake was not turning it off before he left his apartment. If he had if he had turned off his phone before he left his apartment, he could say he was at home asleep or anywhere because unless they had the cameras in Pullman actually captured his tag on his car, uh, you know, he, he could have been anywhere. But just that little drive on camera coupled with just a little phone activity before he turned it off uh, makes it impossible for him to deny he left home and that he made a conscious decision to turn his phone off around 247. I think he must have realized his mistake, and hence he realized that his alibi has to account for him being out of his apartment. One other thing that I would like to add is that the direction of travel when he left his apartment does add to the argument that he picked Kopaka up on the way to wherever he went. And his travel up Johnson Road on his return also supports this. Now, where he went between 247 and 448, and whether Kopaka was riding along with him, is still up for debate. Well, what do you think? In order for my theory to be correct, at least uh, two or three of the phone pings in the PCA have to be accurate. Do you believe that the phone pings are accurate? Or do you believe that they are fabricated? Do you believe that Brian Koberger intentionally turned off his phone? And if you believe that, why do you believe it? 
do you believe that uh, Brian picked up Brian uh, Brent Kopaka uh, once he left his apartment? Just about two hours ago, we heard from Pullman police who explained to us, gave us a little bit more of a timeline of events as far as what happened here. So they told us around 837 last night, they received a phone call from some people who lived in an apartment complex not too far from where we are. Right now we're at Stadium in Maine here, just right across from WSU's campus. And they told us that at that time, they received a phone call from residents at that apartment saying that, um, that one of the people in that apartment was threatening to harm and kill some of their other roommates. Now, there were two other roommates roommates that were in the apartment at that time. Police were able to get them out safely. We're told that they're doing fine. But that 30 year old suspect who made those threats that the male in his 30s, we are told that officers did shoot and kill him. Now we were able again to speak to the chief of police in Pullman and here's a little bit about what he had to say about the situation. His escalating behavior and a continued danger to the public and others. The male was shot by a member of the Whitman County Regional SWAT team. The suspect was found deceased when the Whitman County Regional SWAT team cleared the apartment. Now there is still a heavy police presence here in the area. Part of the street right here is blocked off. It's just a few lanes that are closed, so it's very easy to get around. There's also heavy police presence directly behind me with both officers um, in their uniforms and some out of uniform as well. We also spoke to some of the businesses here in the area who said they really weren't even notified of the situation. One of the women that I talked to at this coffee shop right here, Zoe's, who actually told me that the only reason she was notified was just because her uh, significant other actually happens to attend the school and they got the WSU notification. But several others of their staff members had no idea what was going on this morning when they came in to work. So it's lucky for them that they were actually able to get in and get safely. Now, WSU, since this has all happened, has issued an all clear for students. Students are allowed to now return back to classes, especially on a day like today when many students have finals. That's incredibly important. However, again, this area is still blocked off. There is crimes tape around, and this is still an active investigation. We're also told that WSP is going to be the ones taking over this investigation. And until they, are, they arrive and are able to clear the scene, this crime scene will remain 